breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys. Before the time of the rifts, there was one that appeared on the back of all the comic books Marvel ever made. Ninjas and Super Spies. Ninjas and Super Spies, originally copyrighted in 1984 by our friend Eric Wujic. Uh, it didn't see publication until 1987, and with, like so many other Palladium products of that year, has several, quote-unquote, unofficial editions, because they did the revised version. Uh, Mystic China, which was its one and only supplement, came out in the very early 90s, and then in their seventh printing of the revised edition, they made even more changes, until and then Mystic China, its one and only supplement, uh, got an update in the early 2000s. Uh, you know, uh, Ninjas and Super Spies is kind of this love letter to Bond, James Bond, and Kung Fu, Fu action flicks, and those early late 70s, early 80s super spies suddenly being attacked by hordes of ninjas films that were so popular then. And Eric himself was a practicing martial artist and he designed this game to replicate that exact feel. You can be a dedicated martial artist who's studied under his ninja clan forever. You can be the gizmo tier agent who's got, you know, Q gadgets dripping out of his sleeves. You can play a James Bond character. It's all possible. It's very designed on the entire concept of secret organizations and factions right below the surface of the world. And it has some of the most complex hand-to-hand -hand rules of <laughs> any Palladian <laughs> game. Yeah. Ninjas and Super Spies is one of the few that I missed out on i remember owning a copy of the book before it was revised i remember people talking about playing it and i remember some folks when i would run rifts would ask if we could oh can we use the martial arts and ninjas and super spies and i'd be like no sorry <laughs> <laughs> we're just not gonna play that game because i ain't read it and eh, it wasn't my thing yeah I remember chi attacks. Yep. Uh, very little. Yeah. Light chi, dark chi. Yep. All I know personally about it today is that the revised edition was essentially one giant nerf hammer applied liberally throughout the book. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it was a nerf hammer and it, it fixed about as much as it broke, to be perfectly honest. It was both a blessing and a curse. It, it, of all the Palladium games I've ever run, I think I've designed more house rules for ninjas and super spies than any other game. Wow. A part of it is due to some of the editing slips that happened between base version and revised. I'm opening this book for the first time for this podcast. <laughs> However, that said, on page 10, I've decided that I want to play a Finnish ninja. Yep. Yes. Totally possible. That that's that's what I want to do. That <laughs> I, I want to hakapal my way through <laughs> the legions of mooks and talk in this really like adorable accent. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Finland. I'm gonna work on that, but that's gonna be a lot of fun. All of my knowledge recently, the, all of the things that I've learned about ninjas and super spies, I must attribute to another podcast, the Mega Dumb Cast, which. I must say it's fucking hilarious, at least at the beginning. The Mega Dumb cast was great and talks a lot about Ninja and Super Spies. Like the podcast started off as him going page by page through Ninja and Super Spies, talking about the dumbest thing on each page. Yep. And through nice. that podcast, which is great. If you ever want to join us sometime, I know you're in Portland, dude. So, you know, let me know. <laughs> We'd love to have you on and talk about ways that we love Palladium. Mm. But with his show... There was so much he went into in the background about it, well, on his background, playing the game as a kid and the differences between what he remembers as a kid mm -hmm. and how the book actually is today. And 
one of the most glaring inconsistencies in the book that a lot of people don't realize now. It is technically impossible to play a classic ninja in yep. Ninjas and Super Spies. Yep. Because martial arts are hand to hand combat skills that require, ex- you have to have a class that allows you to take a martial arts style. Some of them require the expenditure of two style selections. And there is only one class in the entire revised game that gets two martial arts, that being the dedicated martial artist. Ninjutsu is one of the styles that requires two. So you think, oh, well, if I wanted to play a ninja, I just have to be the dedicated martial artist. The dedicated martial artist gets like no skills. Right. Hatchling dragons and rifts get, get more, more skills, skills. <laughs> than the dedicated martial artist. They are 100% stupid unskilled they have done nothing their whole life but go yeah yeah and break boards morning to night breaking boards punching hot coals you know pondering life and existence not learning a single ninja skill they can't sneak they can't pick pockets oh, no. they can't create little bombs they can't do any of the classic ninja things totally accurate totally yep. accurate and it <sighs> It's kind of a heartbreaker because you can't really re- replicate Remo Williams to the level you'd want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but what about Chun? Can you bring out Chun? <laughs> <laughs> totally possible. You know, it's it's that's one of the reasons where I say, I say that like you have to do a lot of house ruling to make it work in the way you want it to make it to happen. Uh, in a lot of cases. There's issues because, like, as NPC mentioned, hand-to-hand combat works a lot differently. It's not really clearly laid out anywhere in the books until you're, like, going through the martial art forms sections and you suddenly realize there's this entire range in hand-to-hand combat mechanic that actually exists in the game but isn't spelled out anywhere. There's... Short forms, medium forms, long forms. So your classic one inch punch versus, you know, your standard punch versus an axe kick. And moving between them is how you screw the heck up out of a jujitsuist or a taekwondo. Or, and, you know, the other thing is, is it's it was where uh, I can't even remember the Palladium book that had all of the uh, Asian martial arts weapons in it. The Palladium Compendium of Weapons and Castles of the Orient, I of believe. The, of the Orient, yeah. that was it. And it was like, that was where they got their money's worth out of for ninjas and super spies because every weird and wild martial arts weapon is a fair game in that. And most of them actually appear in ninjas and super spies. And then there's the super size part. You know, you want the debonair spy who hangs out in Monte Carlo and can kick ass at the Baccarat table. It's there. <laughs> you want the sweet car? It's, it's there. there. Yeah. It's, yep. But the and, villain is escaping through the Formula One race. What will we do? Oh, I've got this. <laughs> Isn't there a character class whose whole thing is, I have a sweet car and that's it? You. <laughs> <laughs> there is. I've seen more than one Gizmo Tier occupational character class that was literally built around remaking Kit or another sweet car. <laughs> oh my God, I never thought about that. I could be the car. I what? could get to make another cheese ball character. Yeah. yeah, all you have to do is grab uh, Heroes Unlimited and use the robot rules to with a vehicle body and you can do that. I would do it. I would make a golf cart, a sentient golf cart that could. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 I'm getting ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It would definitely have the entertainment package built in so you could ride around and thump in that golf cart. <laughs> and uh, what, what the, the, the gyro stabilized coffee maker, which I think is an actual item in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm awesome. going through the uh, I'm going through the martial art forms and I have to say I'm a little offended that judo is basic hand to hand. That <laughs> that stings a little. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it, the, and the range of martial arts that is in there is just amazing. Um, you can, 
you know, I, I'm, you know, you're offended about judo. I'm still offended that Savate did not actually uh, make the book because uh, mm-hmm. a French kicking martial art that involves steel toed shoes is, you know, I'm there for it. But, you know, there's also the weird and wild ones like uh, t- uh, Tang Soo Do, uh, the Korean martial art form that's weapon based as opposed to punching and kicking. Uh, the martial art, uh, San Shen something or other, which is the martial, the, the hand-to-hand combat form that samurai practiced is there as well. That I I'm only, looking for a Screamer too. It's not there. The mm. samurai one I know from Rifts would be Zanji Shinjink and Ryo. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's it. My or, Japanese. Zanji Shinjink and Ryu. Yeah. So. My, my Japanese is horrible. Yeah. So. My, mine is too. But yeah, no, and no, just to discuss the warts of this, I I started this off (laughs) very clearly saying that this is a love letter to James Bond and Hong Kong martial art action flicks. And when you approach the game, you really need to keep that in account because culturally there's some questionable stuff in there oh i mean it's 100 percent rooted in the 80s oh yeah like even the revised edition they oh, didn't yeah. change a single aspect of the setting it still is like the commies and yep. the orientals mm-hmm. and going against the soviets it doesn't even acknowledge the existence of afghanistan or mm-hmm. the middle east as like terrorist powers or anything this was pre this was essentially pre-terrorism i don't mean like pre the existence of terrorism Mm -hmm. but pre-terrorism entering the public lexicon as uh, you know the enemy that said in uh, i don't remember if it's in the original but in the revised the afghanistan afghanistan gets martial art and it's the only martial art in the entire game that has a weapon proficiency of rifle (laughs) it's focused on horseback (laughs) fascinating okay (laughs) yeah yeah, there are a couple weird and wild ones in there. But. I would love to see like Mongolian or Kazakhstan martial arts. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Kazakh wrestling yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. It's like, are you wearing a belt? Your life is over. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and yeah, there are there are other ones that were around when the book came out that they left out that I, I, I kind of have a soft spot for. Uh, there's several African martial arts I would have loved to see in there. Sambo should have been in there and it wasn't. Uh, just like it, be- you can only do so much. But you can only do know? so much, yeah. And, and I, again, when you're writing a love letter to James Bond and Hong Kong action cinema, you, yeah. Yeah, you got to keep it in there. So I like the grenade page. <laughs> I thought you were about to say the grenade martial art. <laughs> oh, oh, if only <laughs> a martial art that focuses on juggling grenades. Oh, yes. Uh, Kevin, <laughs> make <Kevin>. it happen. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, buddy. <laughs> if you want more martial arts. Check out the Rifters. I know mm-hmm. there is at least mm-hmm. one, possibly more, that have additional martial arts styles. Yeah, I believe there's at least six that touch on ninjas and super yeah. spies. And there's a few adventures degree. out there, too. Yep. yep. They're weird, though. There's some weird ninjas and super spies adventures yeah. in the Rifter. A lot of the, from my recollection, a lot of the Rifters adventures were using the Mystic China uh, supplement, which, okay, so if... Ninjas and Super Spies is a love letter to James Bond and Hong Kong action cinema. Mystic China is a love letter to Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Good to know. Yep. Hmm. You, you have my interest. Yeah. <laughs> well, that actually brings me back roundabout to talking about some of the more interesting and inventive things that ninjas and super spies does that are not present in the rest of the palladium megaverse unless in very small and specific quantities back to the martial arts we're looking at things like weapon katas and chi powers Uh and these are interesting for like you know palladium has had psionics Uh and magic and Uh things that cost points like that 
But the chi powers work on a pool of chi which fluctuates and can go up or down based upon being at specific cool locations. Mm -hmm. And there's both positive and negative chi. Mm -hmm. And some powers work on negative chi while others work on positive chi. And you can create like these diametrically opposed chi fighters kind of characters. And I think that's really fucking cool. What reminded me of this is you're like big trouble in little China. I'm just thinking of that final fight at the end where the two guys are just having their little their little rock'em sock'em robot laser fight yeah. thing going on, you know, focusing their chi. And it's I'm like, yeah, ninjas and super spies actually let you do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's a straight up fight yeah. between an Atemi practitioner practitioner and a snake style kung fu practitioner. Uh, one's all about light chi, the other one's all about dark chi. And it, they just go into town using chi powers over and over again. So Nice. I want to bring something up that early Palladium did, which I don't think they've been doing very much, which I, I think is kind of a loss. And that is, uh, like, it was in Recon, which we'll talk about, and it was in the, it's in this. And it's their recommended reading list. Mm-hmm. Oh. Where they, where they actually kick you over to, you know, real books. Uh, it's, it's a bibliography of of flavors and where they got their info from. And I mean, it's, it's, it's not a huge deal. You can absolutely play riffs without anything like that. But I mean, I, it's, it's a very nice touch. If you wanted to get deep inside why they brought what they brought, that's, that's, that's something I, I think they I'd like to see continued. You're hitting the, the nail on the head here with something that I never even really thought about, but now that you say it aloud, it's so obvious. I think that from my recent time spent with a lot of the osr the old school renaissance crowds one of the things that they constantly talk about is appendix n appendix n appendix n that is the book the list of inspirations that gary gygax put in the advanced dungeon dragons role-playing game Mm -hmm. and it's appendix n has a list of all of these books that inspired the creation of DD. palladium doesn't have that and it needs it they really need to have this because that gets people talking. That connects people with your creative processes, but also it gets people looking back at it. A catchy appendix in. It's so easy to say. It's so heavily referenced. The fact that there's a bibliography in Ninjas and Super Spies and not in anything else, that's kind of sad. I guess it means that maybe that's why Ninjas and Super Spies is one of the games that people remember more than anything else Mm -hmm. of Palladium's catalog. Yeah, no, there's a couple others. Uh, Beyond the Supernatural has a a couple of reference uh, lists of works in it, Kolchak, The Night Stalker, etc., etc. Recon actually mentions a little bit for further reading as well. Um, Yeah, so it it, it was something that sort of fell out of fashion um, in the somewhere in the nineties with palladium of Mm. putting the, you know, appendix N in there. So I would say not just palladium though. Like, uh, Oh yeah, you're right. All all of them have, have kind of dropped that. The big ones, definitely the indie games have brought it back. Yeah. It's rare now that you will find an indie game or a single print kind of weird concept game that doesn't include an author's note about inspirations. Totally agree. I'm just glad to see Kevin long in this one. Honestly. Yeah. No, he did a ton of work in it. And yeah. It's and it's really so good. different from his normal style. Like the one on uh what is it? Uh page five, just the 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 black clad ninja. Yeah. But it's it's not a, a clean picture, like a normal mm-hmm. long picture. It's you know, it's it's got patterns in the background. It's yeah. uh it's 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 kind of fuzzy, it's kind of dirty. Yeah, it, it it looks like he did that one in charcoal almost. Yeah. I want to give props to this game for having an interesting cover. I've heard people make fun of the cover. I don't care. I think that cover perfectly encapsulates what this game is about. Absolutely. Not Mm -hmm. just that, but they do it in a way that doesn't show three angry heroes standing there brandishing weapons against an oncoming horde of the darkness. Like so many games do. Even spy games or Mm -hmm. horror games or, or science fiction games, this whole three heroes against the darkness thing. This is a straight up murder combat happening between a kicking ninja and some guy with lasers on his wrists. If that image doesn't sell you on this game, you're probably not meant to play it. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing about all of the Palladium games prior to Rifts, at least their basic books. The covers 
tell you exactly what that game's about. Yeah. If you look at the cover of Recon, if you look at the cover of Ninjas and Super Spies, if you look at the cover of Fantasy, uh, Heroes Unlimited, uh, Beyond the Supernatural, you know what that game's about just looking at the picture. You know what? I never really thought about that, but you're entirely right. Yeah. Like, it's it's, it's an excellent summation. And a lot of books don't. When when you think about a lot of the the popular big names, they don't. Think of, uh, think of Third Ed. Think of... Vampire the Masquerade. What's yeah, this rose I mean, about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The cover was a rose and the, the rear cover was just artsy poetry. And none of it yep. tells you anything about the game. Nope. In fact, none of it is in any way indicative of how the game is actually played. Yep. None of the art on the inside is actually indicative about how those games are played. <laughs> what a fucking disconnect if we mm-hmm. want to talk about Worlds of Darkness. Yeah. Anyway, no, let's not do that. <laughs> you know, just still looking at the cover, it yeah. looks because there's uh, ninjas and super spies fighting in the background with each other. And it would appear to me, at least, that the ninjas have the upper hand. In fact, I only see one super spy that is not in dire straits. Right Clearly, Clearly, that cover was made for the original edition and not the revised. No. <laughs> 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 the, the revise keeps the same cover because it's so iconic. Uh, the one other thing about Ninjas and Super Spies uh, that can be ported over to just about anywhere else in the Palladium Megaverse, they have some of the best organization construction rules prior to, I think, either Heroes Unlimited 2nd Edition, which basically overhauled that, and Beyond the Supernatural 2nd Edition, which also basically overhauled that, where if you want to create an organization and... It gets down to things like, what is this organization's budget like? Yeah. <laughs> what's your what's petty their, cash? What's their company culture? <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. their petty cash situation? <laughs> I was I was worried about uh, the glossary because all I could think of was, oh, there's a whole bunch of pasty white kids butchering the hell out of this. There was no uh, glossary in the original. I don't remember if there's one in the revised. I mm. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> That said, though, I mean, there was some fun stuff like uh, it had English, Japanese and Chinese one through ten and you know mm-hmm. how to count. Yeah, all I could think of was just the, the massive amount of just saying things wrong and really annoying people from other cultures. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. And I did a lot of that as a kid, although having friends who were Hmong and Korean helped with a lot of slaps yeah. up the back of the head. <laughs> all right. Just like we did last time. Let's go around the circle. What were your favorite characters from Ninjas and Super Spies? Jacob? I played a a native Hawaiian who uh, practiced the samurai martial art and was a worldly martial artist. And his name was uh, Tom Omahalu. And uh, it was just a super fun game um try it the entire tr- twist was trying to get Sito back up and on its feet now matthew you said you hadn't played this before right not even slightly no all right well uh i've gotten mine i attempted to do my very best to remake the hulk hogan character from the short-lived television show thunder in paradise oh uh, so i was essentially a big beefy guy with a mustache who could you know pile drive anybody if he got close enough but his whole thing was he had a sweet fucking laser boat mm. yeah it might have actually yeah. been named laser boat yeah. i don't remember yeah the super spies stuff just doesn't get the credit it deserves because there's so much meat on that bone. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people remember the ninjas part more than the super spies, but the super spies are pretty cool. Yo, oh, yeah. Nothing like watching a ninja dance around a Mac 10 burst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, any last thoughts? If this is one of the ones I always regretted never getting. I had a really limited budget growing up and that, that got dropped straight into Robotech. And then when I could afford it, riffs. And that was just, that was what I had to play with. But this one was always in the corner of my eye mm-hmm. uh, because I had, I, I, I had a connection with uh, the martial arts world as much as any hillbilly out in uh, Snohomish, Washington could. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really regret not hitting this at its, at its peak. And I, I do have some envy for you guys who got to play it back in the day. You know, we can fix that. Oh, yes. Let's let's do. <laughs> I'll add it to the list. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have a play report at some point in the near future. Anyway, that's all we got for this episode. Thanks for listening, folks. 
And thanks again for joining us, Jacob. As always, thank you. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time.